it's Sasa and today in this tutorial I'm going to show my technique for fabric painting using a stencil. And there's many reasons why you would like to use a stencil if you need all the shapes to be all the same. You can do other techniques for creating a print. One of them is applique which is cutting a piece of fabric and then sewing or gluing it on top of your other piece. So there are different reasons why applique or painting would be better depending on your project. So you think about how much time you need for your project and the speed. Applique is a lot faster because you don't have to wait for the paint to dry. Also the durability of it, how the final look you want to do because both paint and applique, the final look looks a little bit different so it depends what you're going for. And with the applique you can get the no sew versus the sewing uh, uh, fusible. So you can just iron it on and there's no need to do any sewing afterwards. And also you need to think about what color you're doing. If you're putting a lighter color onto a darker color or vice versa, sometimes it's a little bit transparent depending on your fabric. So the first step is to sketch out your design. You use pencil and paper and fold it in half to make sure it's symmetrical if that's the design. And I do many versions until I'm happy with the final one. You can also design it on the computer and print it out. I use a plastic placemat that I got from the dollar store. So I taped the design to the plastic and then traced it with pencil. Afterwards, you carefully cut it out. For this part, make sure you go slowly so you don't cut over the lines or even cut your own finger. So this is the paint that I use. It's a screen printing ink from the brand Speedball. The price is pretty good. It's about 13 Canadian for a tub. I did some paint tests and I decided that I need to paint a white layer first, then the yellow layer on top. For the purple kimono in the photos from the beginning, I painted three coats of the orange paint. It's really helpful to cut out a bunch of paper versions of your design to help you plan out where you want to do place them. Because once you put the paint down, you can't re easily remove that. So I place the stencil down where the design is and I use some scotch tape to hold the stencil in place. When painting, make sure to have a piece of paper or cardboard underneath your fabric. This is to protect your table. The paint brushes I'm using are just cheap dollar store versions and go ahead and paint. Be careful of certain points and corners that you don't want the paint to go underneath the stencil. Once you're done painting, you want to carefully remove the tape and lift up the stencil. After each use, I wash and dry the stencil so you don't get any smudges when you use it again. I let the paint dry overnight before I do the next coat. I place a piece of paper underneath the paint tub in case you drip. I paint the yellow over top of the white and there's no need to use the stencil at this point. You just have to be careful to stay in the lines. Next, I take a gold paint and I go around and I border my design. I take the same gold paint and I create some lines on top of the leaf. If you want to machine wash your clothing, you'll need to heat set it. With a piece of paper to protect it, you pass the iron over top of it. Also the paint sometimes creates little waves or wrinkles. The fabric becomes not that flat, so ironing will help. Be careful not to make it too hot because you can melt or the color may change. 
please tag me if you use this tutorial so I can see your awesome work. And if you want to and can support me creating more free content, uh, either purchase a coffee or buy something from my Etsy shop. Thank you for watching.